Hi guys, welcome back to Urban Rhino Tutorials. On today's tutorial, I want to show you how to make a simple wraparound bracelet. So my students use um, or learn this first wraparound bracelet because it introduces them to a lot of the simple jewelry making techniques that we use throughout this course and um, as they move up into jewelry and glass two, three, and four, and some who choose to take advanced jewelry beyond that. Um, I'm going to show you basically how to work with these simple seed beads, how to crimp the end of your fishing line, um, and how to use a jump ring. There are some other videos I have that focus more on those specific things, um, but this is how you will basically include them all in one um, and how you will apply them. So to begin, you're going to take a piece of fishing line. So here's my fishing line here. We usually try to use um, five pounds or stronger, which means it's strong enough to hold five pounds of weight. Fishing line is great because you can buy it um, for very, very cheap. And um, I think it does just as good of a job as um, like threading wire, jewelry wire, things like that. Um, we do use wire on occasion, but um, in a lot of our basic um, in stringing type assignments, they use the fishing line. So I will um, begin by cutting off a piece of this. So the goal is to have this um, wrap around finished bracelet wrap around their wrist a minimum of four times. So you can just start by cutting off. I tell them to cut about five. Um, I have a little knot in it. About five feet of fishing line is usually sufficient. Um, usually a person's wrist is anywhere from six to eight on average inches around. So five feet is more than enough. I'm going to pull approximately five feet off of here. The other thing you can do obviously is just take it and wrap it around your wrist four times like so. And once you get it four times, um, allow for some extra because you're going to crimp each end to attach your um, clasp. But if you want to just start with five feet, you can do that. So let me pull off enough here. And I'm going to cut that. And to start here, um, what we're going to do is move my beads. You're going to crimp the end of this. So to do that, I have two tiny little crimp beads right here, which a lot of times kids will get, um, I'll zoom in here. Um, a lot of times kids will get those mixed up with the seed beads. And obviously they're not the same. Seed beads tend to be made out of um, a plastic or acrylic material, whereas depending on what type of seed beads you're using. Those are what we use. Um, the, the crimp beads are metal. So the way they find that out the hard way is if they go and try to crimp a bead and they put an actual seed bead on here, when they go to crimp it with their pliers, it crushes the bead, whereas the metal, it actually pinches. So to crimp a bead, you're going to slide the bead on, and then you're going to take this short little tail here, what we call tail of fishing line, and tuck it back in to the crimp bead. Once you've done that, I usually try to um, use your, either use your fingers or use your pliers, grab a hold of the crimp bead, and you want to slide it to the end. You do not want a big, huge, giant loop here. So if you hold it, slide it to the end, and then you're just going to use your um, hand, pinch the pliers together to crimp that bead in place, that crimp bead. Now what that does is that creates a stopping point for your beads. So when I start putting my beads on the fishing line, that will prevent them from coming off. It also allows me to have a space or a place to attach a jump ring on one end, and then on the other end, I'll do a jump ring in a clasp, and that will finish the end of the bracelet. Um, so from here, I'm going to slide that stuff out of the way because I won't need that for um, a while, not till I finish it. 
Um, what we use in my class, you can use a clipboard. We use these, and you can tell it's gross. Um, these clipboards, or not, sorry, not clipboards, these um, chipboard. And we use this for our glass mosaics um, as a backing material. So uh, whenever I cut those mosaic boards, so this is like what mounts on the back to keep them secure, um, I always have a whole bunch of this scrap. And it's really nice to use because the kids can get these little black clips that I provide them. And we can clip this down. And then it holds your string in place. Um, I always remember when I was younger trying to braid like friendship bracelets and stuff. And <laughs> I would always have to tape it to the table because it would slide all over the place. So this is a great way to um, avoid that. So what you're gonna do now is begin putting your uh, beads, let me slide those here, your beads onto your fishing line. You can, I always tell my kids, they can make a pattern. So if they wanted to choose, you know, five colors and alternate them. So turquoise, gold, black, fuchsia, white, and then repeat that pattern, or they can do color blocking. So color blocking is where you do a certain amount of the same color beads for a certain distance. So um, I might do five turquoise beads, one gold bead, three black, and so on. And then um, it doesn't mean that you have to necessarily repeat that. It's just kind of random how you do it. I'm gonna do the color blocking. Um, so when I do this, um, I'm gonna put a few on and then I will skip ahead so you can see once I have all the beads on here because you don't want to watch me do that or you or that will take forever. Um, so I'm going to put some of these on to give you the idea. It's very simple. Um, the nice thing about the fishing line as opposed to like thread is that it is it's stiff here. So these um, beads go right over them and I don't have to use a needle. Okay, so I've got the beads here. Um, I generally try to have the kids uh, tuck that little tail into the beads and then trim off a little bit of it, but that'll hold it in place. Um, and then I'm gonna move on, let's see, we'll do a gold. And then the other thing too, um, you can use another type of bead. Let me show you here. Mayuki beads are nice. Um, these are some here. Um, the nice thing about these beads is they are cut the exact same size. So if you, like when we do our loom bracelets, these are great to use because the patterns are the exact same, the rows are the same, there's no variation. Whereas with these beads, you'll notice when I get them done, um, like my black, actually all four colors with the exception of the gold are pretty similar in size, where the, as the gold ones are slightly bigger. And that is just, even though I, when I order them from, um, I use a company called Panda Hall, um, when I order them, they all say two millimeters, our seed beads are, are two millimeters. Our rocale beads are four millimeters. Um, they still come, you know, in varying sizes. So for the projects that we do, it's generally not a big deal. Um, but again, if you are trying to do a, um, like a loom bracelet, like a woven bracelet where you want to see an exact pattern, I wouldn't, um, I don't think it's a bad idea to try to get them um, Mayuki beads. They're more expensive, but they are worth it. So again, I'm not gonna make you sit here and watch me put um, five feet worth of beads on here, which again, it's not gonna fully be five feet. What I would do is once you get what you think is probably enough to wrap around your wrist however many times you want. So again, for my students, you have to have it a minimum of four times around your wrist. Once um, you get it pretty long, then you can unclip it and check it around your wrist. Um, and then I'm going to speed up the video here, um, skip ahead, and show you how to finish the ends of this. 
Okay, so um, now that I have a strand um, long enough to wrap around my wrist four times, so um, when you're ready to check it, which I had to do this three or four times because I thought it would be long enough, I unclipped it and wrapped it around and it still was not. So um, what you would do is just grab a hold of the end, wrap it around your wrist. So it goes one, two, three. You wanna make sure your beads stay together, otherwise you might make it shorter than what you think. So those meet here on my wrist, so it wraps four times. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is finish this end. And to do that, um, it's basically the exact same way you started it. So you will take your crimp bead, slide it on all the way down. This is the only part that's kind of different. So you wanna go all the way to the um, beads, the very last bead. You wanna make sure all of your beads that are on your fishing line are together. So no gaps. Put your end of your fishing line back through the crimp bead and pull it. Once you pull it, um, again, you wanna make sure that your loop is pretty small. One thing that you can do is take your, let me grab them here, um, round, use the round nose pliers, your um, needle nose pliers are rough, so you risk the chance of, of breaking or tearing the fishing line. So you can use these, slip them in there, and pull it to get it tight, um, and then use your needle nose pliers to crimp it. So that will give you a um, small loop, but you won't accidentally pull it through. So from here, you're just gonna trim off your extra fishing line. Okay, so I've got my finished piece here. I'm gonna put a jump ring on each side as well as the clasp. So for my students just starting out, um, we've got our jump ring right here. You're going to open it up with your two pliers. And remember to twist it, don't pull it apart. So open it like that, slip it on one of your loops on one side and close it back up. It's always important to make sure you close it completely because if you don't close it completely, you risk it slipping off of that thin fishing line. <clears throat> if you wanna see this a little more in depth, on how to use a jump ring, how to crimp, all that. Again, make sure you watch my beginning um, jewelry making basics videos. I'll include those. Um, so on my next one here, I put the jump ring on. So I opened it, put it on this other loop. I'm also going to hook on a lobster clasp. If you wanna use a toggle clasp, you can do that as well. You would put part of the toggle on here and the other component on this one. So I'm gonna slip the, the lobster clasp on like that and close it up completely, okay? So that is your finished piece. So when we move on and do the tassel necklace, which is our next project, you'll have um, a whole strand like this and you'll include your tassel. So it's a similar concept. But this, you would wrap it around your wrist and then you would connect it so this is what you end up with when you are finished. Okay, so pretty simple. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure you stay connected with Urban Rhino on social media. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, comment below, and of course, subscribe to our channel.